Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Micro Monsters. This week, unlike normally, we're not going to be talking about the micro bit. In fact, we're not even going to be looking at a computer at all today. What we're going to be looking at today is a board game called Robot Turtles. This is a game that uh, I backed on Kickstarter about three years ago, and it's a really good game for introducing kind of primary school children, um, from kind of three upwards even, to the basics of how to kind of think through a computer program. Um, so it's not really programming, but it tells you and gives you a chance to practice the kind of thinking that you do to put together a program. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to show you the game, show you how it's played and have a bit of fun. So this is the game. It comes in a nice little box like this. We're just going to take the top off. And you can play it with multiple players. In fact, it actually says on the front here, it says ages uh, 2 to 5, players 3 plus, and it takes 5 to 15 minutes. So actually this is a game that we bought a few years ago and Jasmine played it when she was younger and Natasha played it when she was really young. It probably is better for Natasha's age uh, than it is the kind of 11, 12 year olds. But inside you've got instructions that tell you how to play the game and the various bits and pieces in there. Uh, you've got the main board game, the main board. And it folds out like you can see there. Uh, and then inside you've got uh, a couple of packs of cards. We'll go through what these all do in a minute. So you've got four packs of cards uh, on one side. And they're for the kind of instructions for this game, as in the things that you program. And then you've got lots of these little square um, cards that go onto the game board. And I'll go through all these and talk about what they're all about. Uh, so that's really, it's all in box. And the kind of the point of this game is for me to lay out as the kind of adult a course on this board using the little kind of castle icons and the ice castle icons. These are kind of blocks that the turtle can't get past. And these crates. And the thing the turtles are trying to get to are these little diamonds. There's a different colored diamond that matches each different colored turtle. So somewhere in here are the turtle cards. And there are four of those for the four different turtle players. Um, so as an adult, I lay out the board with all these kind of obstacles and I put the turtles in their four corners on the board. You can see here. And then I put the diamond anywhere I like on the board, but I ideally kind of in a kind of trap that you've got to get around all the obstacles to be able to find where to, uh, where to go with the turtle. And then the idea of the cards is that in the pack of cards that each player gets, there's a number of different colors. You've got purple ones, which are turned to the right. You've got blue ones, which go straight forward. You've got orange ones or yellow ones, which are turned to the left. Uh, you've got red ones, which are to fire the turtle's laser. And that's it. So normally you kind of get them all together. So you've got all the yellows with the yellows and the purples with the purples. Uh, and the point of the game is for the players, the people who are learning how to do this, to lay out instructions for the turtle to get from where they are to where they're going to go. But let's actually have a game and we'll show you how that works. So we've got the basic board set up here. You can see the board is laid out here. Um, and then each player, we've got two players here at the same time, have got their movement cards, all right, on the, uh, along, wherever they like, really, along the board. The great thing about this game is um, you can do two different players who've got uh, two different skill levels. So if you're just beginning, there's a different way of playing the game. If you're really experienced, you can play it in a slightly different way. But what you start off with as the adult is you have to put um, the two players' turtles on their turtle positions. So blue goes on there and purple goes on here, facing the way that they're on there. And then you can put the diamonds that they've got to get to, so the blue diamond and the purple diamond, anywhere you like, really, it doesn't matter. Um, obviously, if you have uh, a more skilled player, you might make it further away, and if you've got someone who's newer to the game, you might make it closer. Uh, now, that would be really boring, because obviously there's nothing stopping someone just going straight to it. So I'm going to lay out some obstacles here with these Cards. So these are kind of the castle ones that you can't get through. They're the walls. The walls, yeah. And I'm going to lay a special ice one. We'll come to that one later. How that works. Uh, and obviously this can take a little bit of time sometimes to do a really good one. Uh, so you might want to do it in advance. And obviously you need to make sure that it's possible to do. Otherwise 
you'll annoy your uh, your players and you might kind of adapt it as you go along I guess so maybe we'll start like that for one side that's a relatively simple one uh, and then over the other side I might use a more difficult course so I'm going to use one of these special crate um, cards for this side and a crate can be pushed by the turtle and you'll see how that works in a moment um, so this game also is meant to be fun uh, it's not there's no real kind of getting it wrong stuff it encourages children to think about how they're take, kind of taking control of the turtle um, but the really important thing as the adult is to make it as fun as possible so we have to do some really important things in this game in that the children have to boss us around they use these cards to make the adult um, move the character for them. So we boss us around saying, move it forwards, please. Uh, and most importantly of all for this game, the adult has to make the noises. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you don't do the noises, it's not as much fun. Uh, so we're going to start with Natasha playing uh, and we're going to lay her cards out here as she's kind of thinking about them so that you can see what's going on. Um, and so if you're a brand newbie to this game, you can do it literally one move at a time. You just ask the child to lay down one move and then you do, then you move it and then you keep on going like that. So we might do that with Tasha, even though Tasha's probably played this enough times, she could happily do it. So what's your first move? Do you want to take the card and lay it out uh, towards the camera? Forward. That is forward, yeah. So let's hold the card up. So this card, the blue card, has a forward arrow on it. So that's the first card Natasha is going to lay. All right, so um, because we're playing the simple mode where we do one mode at a time, we're gonna move it now. So I get to do the turtle noise. <coughs> Don't forget, it's, it's a robot turtle, so it makes robot noises. Okay, uh, and then we can put that one back on the pile if we want, or it's best to leave it here, really, because then you can see the program start to evolve. So what should we do next, Natasha? Another blue forward. Another blue forward. What are we doing now? I want to turn that way, but I don't know. So you want to turn left, don't you? Anti-clockwise, yeah. Have a look at the picture on it. So the picture on this card says turn to the left. There we are on the yellow card. So that's the one we're going to lay down. So the robot now goes. Oh no, he's not going to get forward though, isn't he? What are we going to do? We're going to play the blast icon. So we put that down there. Pew, 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 pew. And we flip over the ice wall and it turns into a puddle which the turtle can move through. So what's your next move now that you've melted that, Natasha? We're going to do another blue forward. Um, let me do my roll. Now what? Another blue forward. And then we're going to do a turn to the left car, the yellow one. And we're going to learn about something, a special card here, because I'm going to lay this down and I'm going to do what Natasha's asked me to do, which is to take this one and go, eh. did you mean to do that? Is that the right way? No! Did you get it wrong, maybe? Just that little bit. So you can use the special card, which is this one, which is the debug card. So Natasha just has to press on the debug card and we get to undo it. So we'll take that one out and move the turtle back to where it was before we started. So debug, it's a funny word, isn't it? You see it's a little bug on the turtle card. It's a word that we use in programming to kind of try and understand why our code's not working. So they've just used that kind of word so that um, you can kind of be used to using programming terms. So instead of turning to the left, what did you want to do? You wanted to turn to the right. So let's put that there. Okay. Now what? Now we're going to do go forwards. So if I move all these up a bit, 
Got quite a long program here. Mm. So you're thinking through which way to turn. Mm -hmm. Which way do you want to turn? I want to turn this way. So that would be turned to the right yeah. if we played that one. Oh. Is that the one you want? Do you want to turn to the right? No. What do you want? No. You want to turn that way, yeah. to the left, oh. or anti-clockwise, didn't you? So, to the left. Forward. Might do two moves at once here. So as they build their confidence up, you can start to get them to do more than one move at a time. So if we move forwards, it would take us to there, and then you want to do the blast icon. Pew, pew, pew! turns it into water. Now what do you want to do? Okay. Eee. Splash, splash, splash. It's going through the water. <laughs> and then you want to turn to the left. How about two moves at once? Yeah. So I'm going to move the program up a bit. As you can see, the program's actually getting quite long now, and I'm talking about it as a program, because that's what it is. We can now follow these instructions, and it would get us all the way from the start to where we are now. So two more move forwards. <coughs> now what do you want to do? And as the child becomes kind of more confident with the game, they're starting to get the grasp of left turns and right turns. So Natasha's kind of getting there now. So we've got another left turn. And I'm upside down now. Was that a left turn? Yeah, that was a left turn. Two moves at once. The final two moves, I think. Are you ready? So Jasmine's played this quite a few times before, so we're just going to get her to lay out her whole program all in one go, and then we're going to try it out. Um, but just like before, if part of her program is wrong, she can use the debug card uh, and then actually fix part of her program. Uh, so let's go for it. So let's do my important role and make all the noises. Ready? Yep. So what's the first one? Can you follow along with your finger? Okay. Forward. Mm. Forward. Mm. Forward. Mm. Push the crate. Turn left. Mm. Forward. Mm. Forward. Mm. Turn right. Mm. Blast. <laughs> Forward. Forward. Turn right. Forward. So the real trick to this is designing the, the, the boards themselves, the layouts, and you have to put a bit of thought into that, even writing them down. Um, here's a website you can have a look at where you can design boards and also see other people's boards. Um, and it's a great resource for kind of doing this because the using the crates and the ice cut uh, walls is a brilliant way of making more tricky uh, mazes for people to kind of work their way out of. But that's the basics of how you play the game. There's one more advanced card uh, that's in here that I haven't shown yet, which is called the function frog. And the function frog, uh, we haven't really used much at all, but the idea is that if you build a maze that has lots of repetitive movements, the same movement over and over again, Rather than repeating the same movement over and over again, you can write a little function where you join together kind of two or three movements with the function card. And then wherever you want to use that function in your code, you just put a function frog and it will go through that re repeated function. Yeah, but Which you is can... a lot like programming really, um, where you can repeat uh, the same code and reuse it. So we've, yeah. we've never really used it. For mine, I could have done two forwards for my function because yeah. I haven't got three of them all over the place. The 
maximum I've got is like two. So I would um, just put one down, and then put the function, then turn left, then put the function, then turn right, then blast, then put the function, then turn right and put a forward card. Well, thanks for watching this episode. I hope you had fun. We did, definitely having a bit of a play. Um, if you want to try out Robot Turtles for yourself, then just check the links below in the description and you can buy it for yourself. And we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Bye.